If you had a choice of colors, oh, which one would you choose, my brothers? And if there was no day or night, which would you prefer to be right? And how long have you hated your wife, teacher? And who told you to love your black preacher? And then, let me stop. Let me stop. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. How y'all doing? I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, I was anxious to kind of give you an update. I know it seems like I'm um, uh, um, uh, doing a lot of content on the Aubrey situation, and I probably will be when the updates come about. Um, you know, I'm I'm going to be make sure that I because I want to see this uh, former DA. I really want to see her get what she has coming to her. Um, and for all, and they sh make an example of her because she's in the indicative of how policing is throughout America. Don't you think this is one isolated incident because it's a small town in Georgia? Okay, they cover up for one another. They lie. We're going to go all the way back to my godmother, whose godson, I mean, whose brother was killed by the Milwaukee Police Department. His name was Daniel Bell. And this is way back in 1957, I believe, 58. And they planted a, a knife in his hand. Okay? And the only reason they got caught was because 30 years later, whatever, one of, one, one of the police officers had a conscience that fucked with him. And the reason why they got caught was not just because of that. The family knew they were lying because they planted a knife in Daniel's hand. And they put it in his right hand. Daniel Bell was left-handed. Okay. Um, Cynthia Bell uh, passed. She's gone on now. Um, but she fought real hard with the city. And she knew that they killed her brother. Um, they were a family from New Orleans. She was the only girl. She had about 11 brothers. And, um, you know, she was a, a very integral part of my um, growing up, Sylvia Bell. And I love her very much. But that kind of behavior is nothing new in terms of, I'm saying, the police department treating people like this. Not only that, y'all, before the days of social media, I'm going to really have to fix these glitches. The days of, uh, before social media. Um, can you imagine how helpless my family felt when an undercover, well, a retired police officer, just like, um, McMichaels killed my brother and n nothing was done about it. And then add insult to injury, the defendant was going into the judge's chamber with Judge Seraphim. He's dead and gone now. And made the worms eat every bit of his corpse. They let the killers go into the back room with the judge. Whatever the judge, they come out, they all go out together. And this man was accused of shooting my brother. Shot him once through the arm and went through the artery. Shot him in the head. You know, my brother's body had knots and stuff all over it. But they got away with it, scot-free, saying they went over there to collect rent from my brother and he didn't have the rent and all that transpired. Can, and you, can you believe this? So th this is not an isolated incident, okay? And then the cover-ups that go on. So I bow to continue to do the updates on this case. Um, and before I get into this, though, I want to say one thing, and this is to the family, um, to uh, uh, Roddy. Brian, you know, it's not good when you um are really that dumb. And y'all knew, right? Y'all, somebody should have had him. Somebody should have put him on pause because I never in my life would imagine somebody being so foolish to follow somebody and you don't even know what the hell you following them for. 
to get into a situation with your neighbors because you see a black guy. That's why your ass is going to fry too because that was so dumb of you. Your family knew you was a dummy. And that's a damn shame because you in jail are with some people you didn't even know. <laughs> you dumb fuck. Excuse my language. But I want to give you an update about this um, DA. And um, because right now, there I don't think it's a court date set yet. But here's the latest on her ass. Jackie Johnson. The county found three men guilty in the murder of Ahmaud Albury. Now the focus is turning to the former district attorney who handled the investigation. Yeah, her name is Jackie Johnson. She's been voted out of office and indicted on charges of violating her oath as well as hindering law enforcement in this investigation. As Martin Savage reports, the three men convicted are not the only ones facing the possibility of prison. An hour after Gregory McMichael, his son Travis and neighbor William Bryan Jr. chased down and murdered Ahmad Arbery on a Sunday in South Georgia. Greg McMichael was on the phone. Jackie, this is Greg. Could you call me as soon as you possibly can? Calling Jackie Johnson, the local district attorney. My friend and I have been involved in a shooting and uh, I need some advice right away. For years, McMichael worked with Johnson, investigating cases for the Brunswick DA's office. Now, as he stood with Arbery's blood literally on his hands, McMichael made sure police knew about the connection. I was chief investigator with the DA's office for about three years, so I know what you got to do. No one was arrested that day or for months to come. Nobody. The Georgia Attorney General contends Johnson's influence in the case not only delayed justice for Arbery's family, but it also nearly denied it. In September, more than a year after Arbery's death, the grand jury indicted Johnson for violating her oath of office and obstructing police. Arbery's family applauded the move in a virtual press conference. And she didn't pull the trigger, but she is just as much to, to hold accountable as the, the three guys who actually did this to a lot. Johnson turned herself in at the Glen County Jail, but was free in less than an hour and didn't have to pay any bond. According to the indictment, Johnson directed police not to arrest Travis McMichael that day, even though he shot at an unarmed armory mm. three times, point blank, with a shotgun, hitting him twice. The indictment also mm. says mm. that after recusing herself, Johnson recommended another district attorney, George Barnhill, never disclosing she'd already talked to Barnhill about the case. Barnhill would send a letter to police mm -hmm. advising that she was Ooh. justified, saying, we do not see grounds for an arrest of any of the three parties. Wow. That could have been the end of the case, if not for one thing. The public release more than two months later of the cell phone video showing Arbery's pursuit and murder outraging a nation. Gregory and Travis McMichael were arrested within days. CNN's made numerous attempts to contact Johnson. You know she don't want to talk to you? ...for comment without response. Johnson's repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and defended her actions, including during a virtual debate when she was running for re-election. I'm sorry that from the very beginning... She lying now. Remember, listen to this. She lying now. That case. that case is a terrible tragedy for our community, and it's a tragedy for the family. I'm sorry about how things happened. I'm sorry that a lie got started and I could not turn it back. Voters didn't buy it. After 10 years in office, Johnson lost the election. Now this one top prosecutor prepares for a prosecution like none she's ever faced before. Her own. And the three men convicted in Ahmaud Arbery's murder are still awaiting sentencing. We'll be sure to update you when their sentences are announced. It's been more than a week. Now, her ass is going to get started with her trial. And um, what is going to really bust this Georgia town wide open is when they start looking at all those cases. And they're going doing it right now. All the ones that she had her name stamped on, <laughs> that she manipulated. And that's going to be a problem. That. Little country town is going to have so many lawsuits. In fact, the Aubrey family is suing her, suing a, a Georgia department. I think they have a, a civil suit against her. I'm not particularly sure, but I know that they're suing uh, 
Barnhill and her because saying that she obstructed justice. So, listen. She's the main one. She is the main problem. And that's what we mean by systemic problems. Systemic. She's in the system. She's representing. Ain't nothing wrong with the laws. They just have to be applied equally. Equally. And that shit that you pulled right there, Johnson, you destroyed the public's trust. It was already hanging on thin air. Thin, a thin thread, I mean. If it, if it was hanging at all. And you just destroyed it all. Because this whole policing is too entrenched with slave catching. And uh, 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 um, uh, citizens arrest. And Jim Crow and all that shit. There's too much wrapped in that. And so I know you're going to have to do it on a case by case basis. But whenever you come up with a case like this, you cannot... It cannot be the first thing you do is try to go to an old law simply because I read somewhere that it's against the law to wear purple in Maine or Vermont on, on a Sunday. And what the hell does that got to do with anything? What? So there are some archaic, um, just insane laws that you wouldn't even think that they're on the books until they come up. And I get it. But what we have to do is we have to dismantle this system. It's a system that is that is born out of slave catching culture and black people being relegated to a certain area in the United States and that kind of craziness. And you need a new program for a new day. And if I don't say nothing else that I mean, I mean, that makes sense. Let me say this. No lie can live forever. And white supremacy is over. You cannot keep going back and back and back. You got to try something new. You can't erase black history. You can't erase black people. We here. And the thing is, you're going to have to deal with it. So, no more cover-up. And when they find out that you have been totally egregious against people, let alone humanity, you got to go. And the same law that got to be applied to you, that's applied to those three that got arrested. And so, I'll keep you updated on this wench. Um, and we'll see you in the next video.